Okay, so we are gonna start off this soap by making my piping recipe up uh, because by the time I'm done with the actual soap, this will be ready to pipe. I do sell this recipe, so if you'd like a no-fail recipe that works every single time, that ships really great because it sets nice and hard and you don't have broken flowers or broken whatever you're making, um, or you're sick of unmolding really complicated molds uh, like the I Dream and Soap cat mold with the cute little paw, this is the girl, it's my hard worker, it's my favorite, and it is for sale on my website. So that ad being out of the way, let's smack into my phone with my stick blender. God bless me, I actually just bought this thing. All right, so we're just gonna blend this up. I do not add goat's milk to this. Um, mostly, uh, why don't I add goat's milk to this? Uh, mostly because of the water. I don't wanna play with my water. I like this to be exactly the right one. Um, it does tend to react pretty So we are going to blend it though. And we are going to get some bubbles. I don't care about the bubbles as much in here because we're going to blend that out. But I do want to make sure this is mixed. It's so loud. God bless. Okay. All right. That's decently blended. One second, let me get this out of the way and I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. So if you've taken my class, um, my piping recipe that I sell, you know that I specifically tell people, uh, don't mix up too much because your hands will get tired. Um, I am kind of dual purposing this. I've got some other uh, pumpkins and stuff that I need to get stems on and another soap I'm making after this that I'm gonna have some leaves on. Um, so I am actually blending up a decent amount of this uh, recipe. Uh, I also want the top of this soap to have really beautiful leaves all over it. So uh, if you've taken my course and you're looking at all this that I'm making and you're like, you said specifically not to do that. Yes, I know I said that, uh, but in this specific case, that's why I'm doing it this way. Uh, whatever I can't pipe because my hands give out, I will just turn into soap dough. This recipe also makes a super good soap dough. So again, if it's that time of year and you're like, holy crap, I would like an easy way to make the top of my soap look cool. Uh, can I recommend my piping recipe to you? Because it will behave very well. Um, it ships really well, which is something that I am fussy about. I can pipe with my regular recipe. I just let it harden up some more. It doesn't, doesn't hold as good as this one does. So. Uh, again, that's my commercial for my recipe because uh, I I like it. I use it. That's why I like it so much. Um, so a little, little PSA there. All right. While this is still pretty liquidy, I'm going to mix in some color. I'm also going to use these colors in the main body of the soap. Um, so, and then, like I said, I've got another soap I'm making after this. You won't need a whole bunch because it's very small amounts of soap. And you want to obviously save it for the main soap. I love this gold. This gold is a combo of like three different places golds. And it is just fab. I do say so myself. Okay. You. This orange, another orange. A lot of oranges today because I feel like that's I mean, I'm not from up north but I've seen enough pictures and I've done enough traveling in this time of year to know that like they do have some green still some of the trees so we're gonna keep all this in there we scoot all these guys back and mix all this in okay wow that looks really messy but uh that's what we got to work with this second so what you're looking at are the little um, condiment containers uh, with Ziploc bags in them, uh, mostly because I'm out of air pillows and I'm not sure if I'm gonna use all this right away. So that way, if I'm not gonna use all of it, I can just take it out and boop, close it and then I've got soap dough. Ta-da! Uh, you know, I, I think it's smart. I mean, you can, you can, your mileage may vary, but I think it's clever. Anyway, so let's blend up our soap. Um, this is, still kind of warm, but we're going to do it. This is my lye solution going in. It has raw silk and powdered sugar and sodium lactate. That's why it looks like tea, because it kind of is. Uh, bug tea, I guess you can call it. 
and then my goat milk. And if you have been watching my channel for a while, you might, may or may not have caught that that's not my normal amounts. Um, this is a slightly smaller recipe. I've got a lot of uh, extra soap in here, my, my tree trunks. So I cut this down by 10 ounces, which means everything else gets cut down. So that's why there's a little bit less. Um, I, I doubt any of you would have even noticed that. Um, but then again, I have people ask me the craziest questions that I had no idea they were even paying attention to. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you all the benefit of the doubt and assume that you were gonna notice and just say something now. So let me just get that mixed. I'm only gonna mix to emulsion, um, mostly, stay, mostly because uh, this is supposed to behave well. I have not used this personally. This is white tea and amber from Brambleberry. Um, it smells beautiful, and but I haven't used it and I don't know. So I'm gonna do something I never do and I'm gonna add my fragrance to the entire batch ahead of time before I mix colors. So everybody cross your fingers that I get away with this. Um, because mixing the scent and the color separately inside those bottles is really hard. I don't want to try to do it and risk having like little spots. So we're going to pour off some into here and then use that to pour into bottles. This is also a little bubblier than I like, but that's all right. We're going to make it work. Let's move you off to the side. Um, so for my leaves, what I wanted to do was the, I think, really effective mini drop swirl technique. It's one of my favorite techniques to do with soap, especially something like this. Let that kind of carry it down a little bit. There-ish. Will you hold there? I need more. Uh, so I think it's a really nice technique to do. I think it looks really pretty, and I think it's very effective. So that's, that's what I'm choosing to do with this. Because I lined these, I kind of have to be careful that I'm getting, getting everybody where they need to go. So let's get some orange in there. And then if you're... All right, so now we've got everything blended and ready to go. If you notice, I've got uh, some chunks of soap up here in this corner. I'm gonna try to make some branches, we'll see. Uh, this soap is behaving perfectly. It's, it's nicely thickened up, enough for me to pour, uh, but not so thick that I can't uh, do anything with it. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of what I'm gonna call sky here. And I do wanna try to get it kind of behind behind these bits here, because I know I've got some holes. So fortunately, this is still very pourable and I can do that um, just to try to get it back up behind there. And I'm just gonna tilt this around a little bit to help it, because uh, I don't want big old squadgy holes in the soap, right? Like you, like it can happen obviously, but I'm trying to not, if I can avoid it. Um, I'll probably have some over here and I'll probably have some over here, but we're just going to go for it. Um, so now that I've got a little bit of the sky in there, I'm going to just do a couple of the browns. Um, and some of the darker reds. I'm gonna squirt some down these back here too to try to get that in there. And now I'm gonna pour a little bit more sky, but now I'm gonna take my spatula and just try to break the fall a little bit. Um, so it's not just taking over there. I'm not sure how good of a job I'm doing at protecting these drops, but we're gonna we're gonna hope that it worked. A 
little bit more. All right, and now we're trying to get like over into like almost the mid canopy area. So I'm just gonna go a little bit more crazy now with my drops. So if I press harder, I'll have less, um, it'll go deeper into the mold, right? Um, but I want this to be not only a mini drop swirl, but also just be fun to look at. So I'm trying to do some varying intensities of, of push when I'm pushing with this. and be sure that I'm getting all my colors in. Oh, in the mold would help, Whitney. And I've got this chunk of soap here. It's kind of holding these up. I'm not gonna take it out just yet. I will shortly, but not just yet. Um, Cause I don't want my trees to fall over and I might leave them in, we'll see. We're gonna do a couple shots of green too. Like I said, I know that green isn't super prevalent, but it does exist. Ooh, sir, could you stand up? Goodness. Hopefully I'm not the only person that talks to the soap like that or inanimate objects in general. You often see me pointing at my stick blender and telling it to behave. Um, it's because uh, I believe that inanimate objects absolutely don't listen. Um, now I am gonna try to do just some little, almost like a pointy layer with the rest of the sky that I've got here. Cause I don't want it to be uh, overpowering, but like trees aren't solid, right? Like when you look up in a canopy, it's not just like a full, like, oh my God, only trees. So it's got peaks of sky coming through. So that's what we're kind of going for here is the peaks of sky coming through. Let our yellow. And hopefully when we cut this, we get a very, um, I'm looking for like a, just you know, really beautiful leaf, leafy scene with leaves falling everywhere and just very classic autumn. So hopefully we will get that the mix of colors here and I try to choose my blue too like not like a bright autumn day because like I don't know when you look at leaves and that time of year where leaves are falling um, the sky is a different color right it's not like that super brilliant blue all the time like it's got kind of a muted gray tone to it um, so that's why my blue is a little muted again we'll add some more sky in I think I'm just gonna go with just my little drops here. I'm not gonna try to add in my branches. I like I like the way this is flowing. I feel like this is successful so far, so I'm just gonna kind of leave it alone. And I get the rest of this blue out. Get that back in there. And is always better than out. And I try decently hard to scrape most of my containers out. Um, some of that is frugality on my part. Uh, a lot of that is, uh, my neighbor is my plumber and they're amazing. And he gets mad at me when I stop up the whole thing, uh, which I've done twice now. So I, you know, a little PSA, uh, <laughs> wipe out your containers so you don't get in trouble for washing them and, you know, backing up the whole house that definitely runs on septic. So if I back it up, everything's backed up. Super great. Love that for me. And again, we're just gonna kind of keep on filling this until it's full full. And I am tickled with how it's looking already. And I'm also tickled that I measured accurately uh, how much batter I needed. Um, so go me, go team. Lisa, if you're watching this, you should be very proud. Uh, because I suck at this normally, but I did almost to the letter of where I needed it. 
and that pleases me. Get in here with that bright red. All right, and we're gonna do a little bit more green and then we're gonna stop there with filling it. So I'm just gonna keep this uh, on real time for just a minute, then I'm gonna speed it up. This is just me filling the piping bags. I'm just showing how I filled them to get a little bit of difference in each of the leaf color of the bags. It's not super exciting, but if you've never seen it done, I figured I would leave it in. Um, it's There's no rhyme or reason or science. I just kind of tucked the colors that I thought would have the best contrast together, and if they mixed, wouldn't turn too ugly. So I did a couple test uh, leaves you can see there in the background just to see if this was ready. And I was having a real problem and I wanted to leave this in to show you. My batter was so well behaved and so fluid that it wasn't giving enough traction for my leaves to stick. So I had to get a little creative, but I wanted just to show that part of the mess here because I do get it to straighten out in a second here, but it wasn't exactly right. Um, I will show a couple more seconds of this mess that I made and then we'll speed it up and I'll show the nicer version of what ends up happening. So you can see here that I've finally kind of found my groove and I've gotten it uh, where I've got enough on the plate already that I can get leaves to stick. Um, so now I'm just going to go through and fill it in. Uh, sometimes I like to do my leaves in a different pattern on each one. For this one, I decided uh, after a few minutes just to make them all pointing in one direction, which in this case is towards my window or away from me. Uh, so you'll see me kind of make all the leaves go in that direction. All in all, this took me about 20 minutes. I did speed this up just because I don't think you want to watch me pipe for 20 minutes, um, but I think it was a really successful final look. So here it is wet right after I finished it. I was so super excited with it. I want to take a little video to show everybody and a quick photo. And next we're going to go ahead and get ready to cut it. So here are the first few cuts in real time. You'll see me flip this because it's still a little tall. Uh, this is just the one tree, but I think this was pretty successful. I'm pleased with how it came out. Overall, I feel like this design was pretty successful and uh, was pretty true to the vision I was hoping to have it. Uh, we'll let it go for a couple more cuts um, now that I flipped it over because it was a little too tall. And then I will speed it up so you can uh, don't sit here and watch me do this all in real time because it takes a minute. But can we just like look at those mini drop swirls? Like that came out really cute. It smells really good. Uh, this is the white tea and ginger from Brambleberry and I think it was a really good scent for it. Uh, notice that my little leaves on top don't even move uh, when I'm cutting them. That again is thanks to that recipe. I love my recipe. Uh, and here we go. You can actually see some of the birch now. So yay, they came out. I'll stop talking now and just speed this up so you can see to the end.